Okay, since I'm just a talking head, I'll I'll start now. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, great. Okay. Bonjour et bienvenue à tous et à toutes. Nous sommes heureux de vous accueillir à la première partie de l'atelier sur la visualisation de données. Dans ce premier atelier, en deux parties, nous apprendrons à créer les réseaux avec Gephi. Good morning and welcome to the first part of the data visualization workshops. I'm Jada Watson, coordinator of digital humanities here at the University of Ottawa, and I'm delighted to be collaborating with IT solutions to bring these workshops to you. In our first workshop in two parts, we're going to learn how to create networks with Gephi. Um, and please be sure that you've registered to the second part, which is on October 4th, next Monday, as it will be a continuation of today's workshop. Before we begin, I would like to start our session with an Indigenous land affirmation. Nous rendons hommage au peuple agonqué, gardien traditionnel de cette terre. Nous reconnaissons le lien sacré de longue date, l'unissant à ce territoire qui demeure non cédé. Nous rendons également hommage à tous les peuples autochtones qui habitent Ottawa, qu'ils soient de la région ou d'ailleurs au Canada. Nous reconnaissons les gardiens des savoirs traditionnels, jeunes et âgés. Nous honorons aussi leur courageux dirigeant d'hier, d'aujourd'hui et de demain. We pay respect to the Algonquin people who are the traditional guardians of this land. We acknowledge their long-standing relationship with this territory, which remains unceded. We pay respect to all Indigenous people in this region from all nations across Canada who call Ottawa home. We acknowledge the traditional knowledge keepers, both young and old. We honor their courageous leaders, past, present, and future. Thank you for being with us today, and I am now going to pass the screen over to Dr. Jarno Vanderkolk from RT, IT Solutions, who will present the workshop today on Gaffey. Yeah, thank you, Jana. <laughs> uh, yeah, welcome, everyone. Um, so we're going to talk about Gaffey. Uh, let me get the screen sharing going. Uh, nope. There we go. So I have some slides, uh, but a lot of the session will be just uh, for the Gavi program. So the first step is that you can actually download the slides. <laughs> and I had the link in the chat, see if I can find it. Here we go. So yeah, you can download the slides there. And that's helpful because I'll be inside of the program a lot of the times, uh, but the slides have all the instructions that I'm going to do. So uh, if I get too far ahead, then you can look back in the slides or if I'm doing something, you can look ahead. So it's very useful if you just download the slides. <clears throat> so yeah, you can download them at uh, yarna.ca uh, slash gaffy.pdf. And that will get you this an exact copy of these slides. So yeah, Gaffy is going to be a, is a network graphing tool. Uh, it's open source, which is nice uh, because that means it's free and everybody can use it and even modify it if they want to. And it's really useful for mapping these networks like Twitter networks or uh, friend networks or any other kinds of networks that you might want to visualize. Uh, so there's a bunch of stuff you can do. Uh, first, I'm going to show you some screenshots because that's always nice to see what you can actually do with the program. So there's some pretty complicated networks that you can build uh, with Gephi. Uh, this is like an example of uh, probably a Twitter network where you have large clusters of people that are talking to uh, mainly among themselves. And Gephi will let you identify the groups and um, identify them and uh, group them together. So you can, can get, get an insight of who talks to who. Um, but yeah, it's like a, some really pretty things you can make with it. <laughs> And they also put in a link for um, sort of a workflow that you can use. Uh, so this link here, it details more on how to actually, actually also get the Twitter data and then feed that to uh, Twitter, uh, sorry, to Gephi. Uh, that's a pretty nice write-up. So if you're interested, you can go there 
you can see what commands you need to type to get all the stuff to data and then how to modify the data so you can use it in Giphy to create something that looks like this. And then you can also see the analysis that they managed to do on this. That's pretty neat. So yeah, like uh, Jana said, uh, this is going to be a two-part uh, workshop. So today we'll be learning about how to load data, uh, how to use the user interface. And at the end, I will present some exercises which you can do if you want to uh, during the week until next Monday, also at 10.30, when we will go through all the solutions. And we'll also be able to share some of the prettier pictures that we've made. Um, yeah, so day one today is just going to be uh, a quick intro to Gephi. And then afterwards on your own time, you can uh, dive into the details a lot more deeper. I find that it works a lot better if you just uh, sit with the program for a while and then pr try pressing all the buttons and see what they do. <laughs> um, so for this workshop, we're going to use uh, Gephi. Um, in the email, I already had the link that you could uh, download it. Uh, so you can go to gephi.org uh, where you can download this program. Uh, I've had two emails about people that had trouble starting the program on the Windows. And for them, the solution was to download the latest version of Java. So if you get errors about Java versions, uh, you might want to download the latest version of Java as well. And after that, it hopefully should start working. And if not, you can, of course, uh, contact me. <laughs> uh, so do most people have Gephi already installed? I see one, yes. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, yeah, so Gephi also has a whole lot of plugins um, that extend the fun functionality of the program. Uh, one of the plugins that they have are for loading data. So there is one plugin that can directly import from Twitter. Uh, I haven't used that myself uh, personally, but <laughs> it's there. Uh, live web browsing analysis, so you can look at a website, see all the visitors come in, see what pages they co connect to, uh, and that sort of stuff. Uh, you can have other layouts, so you can put like a country map between uh, behind the, the network, so you can actually visualize it ge geographically if you want. And there's a lot of uh, plugins for analysis as well, uh, but uh, Gephi has a lot of them already built in, and we'll stick to those. But if you want to do something that Gephi currently does not do, uh, it's likely that there's probably a plugin for it. Um, it supports a lot of data formats. Uh, these are four of the bigger ones that it supports. So the first two, they may not be very familiar to you, uh, but the second two, uh, CSV, which are the comma separated values, and spreadsheets, uh, you probably know about those. And those data files, they contain uh, the nodes. So that could be a person, it could be a computer, it could be like an entity that connects to something else. And it also contains the edges. So those are the links between uh, all the nodes. And another word for nodes is also vertices, but uh, Gephi uses the term nodes, so we'll stick to that. So with that, uh, we can get to the more practical stuff. Uh, I have a data set that we can play with. Uh, it's called uh, the High School Friendships. It's from uh, an Illinois High School from 1957. And they just interviewed all the kids and asked them who they were friends with. And then they recorded that. And it's kind of funny because some people are friends with other people, but the other people are not friends with them. So that's kind of like a directional graph. <laughs> So with that, I'm going to st stop this share and I'm going to share this Gephi screen itself. So just give me a minute there. Uh, share Gephi. Share. Get that out of the way. Oh, and uh, now I also see the questions. <laughs> Uh, Java has 32-bit and 64-bit versions. Gephi needs a 64-bit version. Oh yeah, right, that's a good point. Um, yeah, get the, the version, the 64-bit 64 64-bit version for Java if you have trouble running Gephi. 
And then she can move this thing out of the way as well. So yeah, everybody can see the Gephi screen. It should be totally blank, but it should say Gephi. <laughs> yeah, okay, great. So to load data, you go to file and then open. Um, I'm not sure if you can actually see the open dialog, which is kind of annoying, but if you get the open dialog, you should uh, get the file uh, hs.dl. I'll just put the link in the chat. And that's the data file that you can download. And you go to file open, and then you select that file, and then you press OK. And you should get a network that looks like this. It will be different for everyone because the, the nodes are put in uh, random locations. Yeah, is anyone having trouble loading this data file? Uh, could you repeat the last step, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, you go to file and then open. Uh, that will open a, a file selector. And if you open that, you can um, open the hs.dl file and then okay and you get the network. I guess I opened it twice now. <laughs> Let's get rid of that. Yeah, so this is the, the GAFI interface. Um, on the upper left here, you have the appearance tab. So that lets you change um, of appearance of the nodes. So you can change the colors, you can change the sizes, uh, but you can change the color and you can change the size depending on certain properties they have. So for instance, you could change the color based on the number of connection each node has. Uh, you can also do it for the edges. So you can, uh, in this case, the edges do not have weights, but uh, later we'll get to data sets where the edges have different widths. <clears throat> and all that is controlled uh, through the appearance tab here on the top left. Then at the bottom right, you have the layouts. So layouts let you choose different uh, layouts and these are pretty much just simulations. So they, uh, they can contract the network, they can expand the network they can apply a force to all the nodes. So that's for uh, pushing the nodes outwards or inwards uh, or, um, um, or <clears throat> put them in a certain layout basically. <laughs> uh, then the, the main screen, uh, that's uh, where all your nodes are. Um, and here at the bottom of that, you have the, uh, the properties for the labels and the sizes of the vertices and that sort of thing. So here you have additional makeup um, parameters, but these apply to all the vertices, whereas this one uh, you can specify uh, based on properties that they have. And then here on the right, uh, if it's set for statistics, you have a bunch, bunch of statistics that, statistics that you can run. So you can get like the average degree, uh, this average path length. So how connected certain nodes are, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, that can be, can be calculated through the statistics screen. Then you also have another tab called filters. Uh, filters let you hide or show certain things. So for instance, if you have a big network and you have a whole bunch of nodes that are only connected by like one edge, then you might not want to show those. So you can <coughs> uh, filter those out and then your picture will become, become a lot clearer. 
Uh, yeah, so any questions about uh, these different layouts? We'll be going into them, of course, but. <laughs> Uh, when I download the data, it saves as a TXT file. Oh yeah, uh, that is correct. Um, it is essentially a text file. So that's fine. You should still be able to uh, open it. Uh, if it's complaining that it doesn't recognize it, then you have to rename it back to uh, a DL file. Okay. So you can use your scroll button on the main screen to zoom in and out. So this is, uh, I'm scrolling on my scroll wheel right now. Uh, you can also use the right mouse button and then yeah, while you hold it down, you can move the, the picture around. So yeah, you can then zoom in and then move through different aspects of the, of the, the network. Um, and if you mouse over a certain node, for instance, this one, uh, it will show you all the nodes that it's connected to. So that lets you visualize, inspect uh, any of the nodes and see how, they, uh, how they're placed in a network. So that's pretty handy if you are interested in the connection from one certain uh, node. So then for the layout, uh, we can choose different layouts. So if you choose a different layout and you choose a uh, force atlas, and then you press run, you'll notice that it uh, splits off into do two different sections. So even though it looked like it was like one network that was totally connect interconnected with each other, uh, if you run a force atlas, which applies a force to all the nodes and pushes, you know, pushes them apart, uh, you can see it actually splits into two uh, distinct, distinct networks. So I'll just press uh, stop again. So it stops uh, pushing around. And if I now choose uh, Fruchtemann Reingold and I run that one, it tries to uh, push, it, push it back together. I uh, see a question. I renamed my text file as hs.dl. I get this error message when I try to open impossible to find compatible importer. Please check the extension. Um, oh, wow, everybody has done. Huh. I wonder if Windows is just hiding it for you. Okay, let me just check. Mm. So if I open, oh yeah, so yeah, that's Windows being Windows. So what it's doing is it's hiding the .txt. So even though the file is called hs.dl, it's really called uh, Mac as well. Mm, does Mac hide Windows? Uh, does Mac hide extensions as well? Uh, okay, I think I know how to fix that. Just one minute. Uh, compress a zip file. Take that one, put it there. Oh, that's not what I meant. Okay. 
So I put a link new, new link in the chat. Uh, I made it a zip version, so hs.dl.zip. Uh, if you download that and then double click on the zip file, you should be able to uh, copy the hs.dl file. This side. Oh, sorry, I put the link. Ah, sorry, <laughs> I forgot the yarn. Let's see. Yeah, so that should download a zip file. And inside that zip file, there should be the hs.dl HS that you should be able to drag onto your desktop or wherever. I see a lot of people oh, work with a zip. Okay, yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. I should have thought about it. Uh, I'm using Linux, which um, doesn't do the hiding of extensions, so I didn't realize this would be a problem. <laughs> okay, it worked with a zip as well. Excellent, okay. Um, let's see. So you didn't miss much. Yeah, so can you load the file? So file open and then open HSDL and then you get the random, uh, oh, let's just start from the beginning. <laughs> open. So yeah, you should have this random collection of nodes now. And you can zoom in and out with the scroll button and with the right mouse button, you can move it around. And we were just uh, playing with the layouts. So if you go to layout, uh, force atlas and press run, you should get uh, these two distinct islands. And then we go to the first one, Rheingold and run that and then stop that. You should get this figure. So it's like a, a disk with uh, a fracture in between. And again, this will look different for everyone because it's all randomized and uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, and if your, um, your tool is selected as like this little hand icon, then you can actually grab a note and move it around. So that lets you uh, put the final touches. If like the automatic, lay automatic layouts didn't quite do what you wanted it to do, you can use uh, a click and hold to drag these things around. Uh, but it gets a bit tedious sometimes if you want to drag out single nodes, especially if you're, when you have a lot of them. So uh, up here where it says dragging, you can press uh, configure and then you can increase the diameter. And then you get like this big gray disc that selects a lot of nodes at the same time. So now if I drag it, it drags the whole thing. And you can go back to configure and reset it all the way to one. And then you can select the single notes again. So I messed up my layout a bit by doing that. So I'm just going to run uh, first to man Ryan Gold again. Oh, that's kind of weird. You're not supposed to go there. It looks like it's connected, but it's not. I'll just move them out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that uh, also shows you how you can uh, fix stuff that uh, these automated layouts do. Uh, then the bottom toolbar for the formatting, it lets you turn on labels. So if you do that, you can see the numbers for each note. 
you can also change the thickness of uh, the edges. So if you set it all the way to max, you can see that there are actually arrows. So this one is bi-directional. And let's see, are there any single ones? Yeah, this one is uh, like a single direction. So you control that with the, the left slider here. It, it's the thickness of the edges there. Uh, let's turn on the labels again. And here you can change the font sizes. Let's put it back a bit again, like that. Okay, so now we're going to uh, actually make some, uh, give some meaning to this network. So if you go to appearance, uh, notes, and then ranking, uh, it lets you choose an attribute. So that's notes and then ranking, and you can select a degree. So that's the number of connections from each node. Then when you press apply, you can see that the dark green ones, they are the most heavily connected one and the light green ones, they're the least connected. Yeah, so you have to click apply for this to show. <laughs> and here is like a little menu card thingy. I'm not sure how to describe that, but if you click on that, and then default, you can change the different color schemes. So apply. And for that one. So now the purple ones are the least connected and the green ones are the most connected. And you have a bunch of different ones that you can choose from. And you can invert it as well if you want uh, the colors to be inverted. Uh, you can also change um, the colors yourself. So if you move your mouse over the color bar here, uh, you can see those tri triangles appear. And then when you double click one of those triangles, you can change it to a different color. And then apply. And now the orange ones are kind of medium connected. You can also remove them altogether. So you can drag them off. So you hold your mouse button on the triangle and you move, then it just disappears. And then you get like a single color one. Uh, but if you click and click once, click twice, you can add all these little triangles and then you can give them different colors. and then you get a very colorful diagram. <laughs> so maybe too many colors is not great, but you can do it if you want. So any questions so far about the, the coloring of notes? Okay. So the other thing is node size. So before we had this like little palette icon, but if you click on the triple circles, uh, that is node size. And here you can choose ranking and uh, let's choose degree again. And then you can set a minimum size and a maximum size. Uh, by default, I think it's 10 and 40, but here I changed it to 20 and 60. So I'd remember that from last time. Uh, anyway, if I click on apply, uh, you can see that the big nodes have the most connections and the small nodes have the least connections. And let me just go back to the colors real quick so I have a more same. Uh, yeah, that's a bit better. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, so uh, nodes, the size of the triple circles, and then ranking, and then degree. And then you can change the minimum size and the maximum size. And then you should get a diagram uh, like this. You can also do the same for uh, font size. Um, 
I rarely use that. Uh, usually you have enough with just uh, uh, just the color and the size uh, that should give you all the information that you want. But if you want, you can also change the font sizes and stuff like that. So yeah, those are the tools that are available for uh, conveying meaning by color and by size. Uh, the other thing we can do is we can go to statistics. So here we have a bunch of statistics and we're going to do uh, average path length. So you can press on run and it'll tell you what it's going to do. So you press okay. And then you get these plots that are um, the results of these statistics. The statistics. Uh, most of them don't mean too much, <laughs> uh, but you can actually see the algorithm. So they quote, uh, they reference the papers underneath. So if you want to know more what they do, uh, you can look at the paper. Uh, but the one we are interested in is uh, usually between us. Uh, the graph itself doesn't say too much. Oh, we can't see the bubble we know. Um, That's annoying. Uh, if I share my full screen, it will be way too small, which is too bad. Um, okay, let's do it like this then. Yeah, <laughs> it's not the best way, but sorry. Uh, yeah, so that gets you uh, a report like this. Uh, every time you run one of those statistics, you get um, you get histograms like this. So these are properties that are calculated according to certain algorithms. So here's the paper that is uh, referenced. Uh, you can look at the paper if you want to know exactly what it does. Uh, the one I'm most, most interested in is the betweenness. So that's a measure on how in between a node is. So that means that uh, if there's like five nodes on the left, and they go through that one node to three nodes on the right, then it's like uh, really connected, like all the connections go to through that one person. So this is like a high school student. So a student that has like a really high between us, uh, all of the information basically flows through them. <laughs> yeah, so let's go back to Gephi. Uh, sure. And yeah, once you've run one of those statistics, uh, it calculates new properties. So when you go back to uh, node coloring, so the little palette thingy, and on the ranking, if you choose, uh, if you drop down, drop down the menu you now all have uh, between us centrality. And then when you click apply, you can see this one node here, it's very dark colored. And you can see also it has a lot of connections. So the fact that this node is so dark colored, uh, it means it's like a central link to uh, these students. Like everybody talks to this student and this student talks to all the other students. And even if you have a student like this one here, oops, like this one here, it's not well connected, but it's connected to this one, which is connected to this one. So the one with this high between us, uh, even if it's not directly connected to this one, it's indirectly connected to it. And we still have to split between these two groups here. So on the other side, we have another one that's well connected. Uh, is, there is there a difference between number of connections and amount of between us? Uh, yes, so the amount of connections like are direct connections to your friends. Uh, but between us also takes into account friends of friends and friends of friends of friends. So it's not like a direct connection to that one person, but it can go to multiple persons. But if you want to go from one person in network to another, uh, you always have to go to through that one with the high between us. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> okay, so the other one that we have uh, is filters. So filters let you uh, 
fills out the information that you see. And there's a bunch of them here. So you can expand them, equal, and edges, and topology. Uh, you have a whole bunch of them. Uh, so we're going to try out one. Um, let's see the topology one. So if you extend topology and you choose a degree range, then you drag it to the filter. So yeah, you just take it and you drag it to drag filter here. Then you should get like a little, little histogram like you see under here. And then you can change it. So now I change this from one to three just by dragging the slider. And then when I click filter, uh, you'll notice that a few of the nodes that were not connected here, they disappear. So if I press stop, they come back. If I filter, so you get rid of the, the nodes that are least connected. And that presumably have the least uh, contribution. <laughs> can move a bit up more. So this is now filtering for at least 10 connections. Uh, it should take into account also the range. Um, yeah, so it shows you the the nodes that are the most connected. <clears throat> For instance, this one, it's probably nine. Oops, sorry, it's uh, not cooperating very much. <laughs> anyway, this is a measure for how much they're connected with each other. Uh, another one is uh, ego network. You can drag it on top of there as well. And now you have two filters. So here's the ego network, and then you can type in a node ID. If you want to know the node ID, you can press the T. Uh, that gets all the numbers back on. So oh. uh, once filtered like you want, can it be exported as a new data set or as a graph? Um, so you can't export it as a new data set uh, because it still matters for the calculation for the statistics. Uh, but when you export the figure, uh, you can uh, still filter them out. So let's do 22 and then filter. And then we can only get the ones that are connected by 22. Uh, it's possible to show only a given number of nodes, say the 50 node with the highest degree. Uh, no, you have to play with the you have to play with the slider. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is the, the ego network. So I put in uh, number 22, and then it shows me all the nodes that are connected to 22. I'm going to pick another one, 18. It shows me all the nodes that are connected to 18. So that lets you zoom in on like a really specific one, but you can also specify the depth. So I can do two. And now it shows you not only the nodes that are connected to this one, but then connected to that one as well. So these are like the, the level two friends, if you will. <laughs> and you can make number three. And then you can really see how they're connected to. Like 68 has a really high uh, central centrality. So if we put in 68, uh, sorry, between us, has a really high between us. So if you do 68 and then one, it's already well connected. Two, that's pretty much the whole network already. I mean, the half that was connected. And then with three, it's the whole network already. So this person, number 68, it's really, really well connected. <laughs> uh, 
And then when you want to stop filtering, you can press stop. And another thing about the filters, if you turn it on, uh, you can see it turns bold here. And you can only have one filter uh, active at the same time, unless you added subfilters. So here's a degree. Uh, let's go back to the ego network. If you click on this, uh, I'm not sure what it is, that thingy <laughs> in front of it, uh, you can create subfilters. So now we could add a subfilter to that. And now you're applying two filters. So you, uh, these main queries, you can only have one of them. But you can add subfilters by uh, clicking on the little thing in front of it, and you can keep doing that. So you can keep, you can make these whole chains of filters, like uh, if you want. Any questions about these uh, filters and statistics? For the exercises, I'm going to let you try out a bunch more. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm going to press stop and we'll get our network back. And then we can go to the, the data laboratory. So if you go there, you get what looks like Excel. Uh, so it's a spreadsheet of all the data that was loaded, uh, including the, the properties that we've calculated. So here's the between us centrality and the numbers that were calculated for that using the algorithm that was described in the paper that was referenced in the filter. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can see here the ID and the label is the same as the ID. So if you look in the, the graph, uh, number 22 here has a label of 22. So if we look at number 22, let's sort by that, 22. So if you change the label, you can change that there. Then you go back to overview. It will still now say number 22. So the data laboratory lets you uh, change the names. And also all the properties that were calculated, um, you can change them as well if you want to, but they are calculated automatically. So you probably shouldn't. <laughs> and then, there's the nodes, nodes and the edges. So the edges are the connections. So here we have a link from one to 14, uh, from three to nine, etc. they're all there. And that is a type. So this is like a directed graph. So one node points to another one. You can also have undirected ones and then they go both directions. And then finally, there's the weight. Uh, so that's the, the strength of the connection. Uh, in this case, it's just a friendship. So it was like a question, are you friends with this person? Yes or no? So that's uh, the, uh, the quantization. Uh, but if you ask for like, uh, how much uh, do you know this person on a scale from one to five or whatever, uh, then you could have weights. So if I made this weight like 10, and that's from number one to 54, and then we should have, oh, <laughs> I made it a bit too big. Like this is the arrow you see here. So let's change it to a bit more realistic for. Uh, that's still massive. Okay, let's just make it two then. Yeah. It's still scaling it massively. And I'll just decrease this one. Yeah. So the reason that I, when I changed the number it didn't matter is because I forgot that it does auto scaling. So there's like the smallest and the biggest. And based on that, it's going to scale in between. Uh, but you can see here, this is the link from one to 54. And that arrow is like a lot bigger than the other one. So it shows you the, the weight uh, I see a question, how to specify edge length. Uh, you don't really specify the length. So the length is determined by um, how far one node is from the other. 
and that in turn oh see another question uh, yeah so the, the the distance between the nodes is depend sorry the edge length is dependent on the distance between the nodes and the position of the nodes is determined by whatever layout you chose to use so for the fruchtenman Rheingold, it uh, changed it to um, to have a representation where everything is ordered in this circle and the nodes are kind of the same distance so the edge length doesn't really have a meaning in that respect but you can also just drag the nodes wherever you want and it, that will change the edge length, edge length as well. So yeah, the edge length doesn't have a, a meaning so much in these networks here. Uh, let's see, this is some steps back. Can you explain again how you got the between us and 12 attribute to show up under appearance? Yeah, okay. So if you don't see that, that means you didn't run the statistic yet. So if you go to statistics, uh, the one you want is average path, path length. Uh, if you press on run, uh, it will give you like a pop-up that says shows what it calculated. And if you close that, you should have a number now in average path length. And once you've done that, you will see uh, between a centrality in the, uh, in the ranking. Uh, yeah, so that's it for the data laboratory. Um, there's some more buttons for adding nodes, adding edges, and you can also import spreadsheets here. And that's something I will keep for the exercises and handle in the next workshop. But yeah, these are where you can find those buttons. And there's a few more other buttons that you can use to um, calculate other properties or append or modify the data. Uh, but yeah, you have to remember that there's like two nodes that you have to switch between. So you have nodes and edges. And that's a bit, um, what's the word? A bit hidden sometimes, because when you go to the data laboratory, you see all your nodes, but you don't see how they're connected. And it's like this little button that you have to click on edges to be able to see that. Okay, so then when you're happy with your uh, network, with your filters and your calculations and the data, uh, then you can go to preview. So preview lets you create uh, the nicer version of the image. So by default, it doesn't show anything. You have to click on refresh. And then it will show a more stylized version of the same network. So if you compare, uh, these are all straight lines. But in the preview, they made it like curved like this. And there's different, uh, there's a whole bunch of different properties that you can uh, modify, uh, but you can also use the presets. So if you have default curved, I think that's pretty much the same. It, oh yeah, it adds the labels to it. And when you change something, you always have to click on refresh. It doesn't do it automatically. And that's because sometimes when you have a really, really big network, uh, you don't want it to render all the time because if you have thousands and thousands of nodes, uh, clicking on refresh will take a long time. So in that case, you want to make sure that your options are right before you say, uh, calculate the entire network. So default straight, that changes line to straight. You can also make like a black background. Doesn't look that great for the color scheme I chose here. <laughs> we would need a darker one. So if you want to change that, you go back to the coloring, choose a different one, one that's uh, darker, like that one, apply, and then refresh. Yeah, that's a bit better. <laughs> uh, what, how should we save when working on a graph like this? Uh, yeah, so that's the next step. <laughs> so you can save this image um, as a SVG image. Oh, how did you get back there? Yep. 
So file save. And then where are we saving this? Uh, wait, sorry, I clicked on the wrong button. <laughs> Um, this is the button I want. So export, there's an export button underneath and that lets you save the graph. So you can save it as a PDF. You can save it as a P, oh, sorry, you don't see this one. Uh, if you click on this button, SVG, uh, PDF, PNG, uh, you'll get a file open dialog, a file save dialog, where you can specify the file name and the file type. So you can save it as a PDF, uh, which is nice because it's relatively small. It's easy to send to other people. Uh, you also can send it as uh, save it as an SVG, which is a, it's a scalar, sorry, it's a vector graphic. So that means it's an infinitely zoomable graf graphic, which is nice to put on websites. Uh, you can also save it as a PNG, and then it's just a, a regular image that uh, everyone with an image viewer can see. Uh, does that answer your question, Isabel, or did you mean to save the whole graph? Because the other thing you can do is you can click on File, Save, and that's when you save. Oh, I see, if you want to keep working on it later. Yeah, then you would go, go to File, Save, and then you could save your project uh, uh, in a location where you can find it again, <laughs> and then you can reopen it. Uh, another question, some of the notes are overlapping each other. How do I fix that? Uh, yeah, you can go back to the overview and you can move the notes around. So you can move it to different locations. And then when you go back to the preview and click on refresh, the, the node positions will update. Okay, so then there's one last thing. Uh, and the mention, in the beginning I mentioned you have a lot of plugins. So under tools, uh, plugins, and then I have to reshare that part of the screen again, I think. So stop share, share plugins. So yeah, when you go to tools, plugins, plugins, you get a screen like this. And when you go to available plugins, you have a whole bunch of things that you uh, can select. So I think this is the one that tracks a website in real time. Uh, it was one of the examples I gave at the beginning. Uh, it's pretty neat. So you, your graph is being updated as people are visiting your website and you can see how everything connects and stuff like that. And there is another one that's part of the exercises for um, uh, that you need for the exercises. Uh, it's in the, the the slides, so it exactly shows you what to do. Uh, but the plugin is called uh, where is it? Convert. Uh, is it here? Huh. I kind of lost it. Where did it go? I'm looking for the Excel one. Oh, I already installed it. That's why it's here. Okay. So for you, it would be under available plugins, uh, but for me, it's under installed because when I was playing with this, I installed it. So that's why it's uninstalled. But there's one called uh, convert Excel and CSV files uh, to networks. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I see if I do found it already. <laughs> Yeah, so it's either in available or installed, depending if you already downloaded it or not, which I did. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's one that we'll use for the exercises later. 
Um, so yeah, you can file, find that under tools, uh, plugins, and that's when we'll need. <laughs> okay, we close that. And then I'll like to go back to the slides. Uh, share desktop. Uh, kind of lost my pace. Oh, there we go. That's not what I meant. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of the lighting tour what we've done so far. Uh, so I've shown you how you can import data, how to add plugins, how to sort of analyze the data, how to play around with the layout and how to export things. So the next thing I want you to do uh, in this week until the next session um, are exercises. So the slides that you download in the beginning uh, we've done up to slide 36, 37, and all the slides after those are like exercises. So I want you to like repeat on the stuff that we've done so far, but just like take your time <laughs> uh, because this is like a, a lot of information in uh, not a lot of time. So there's like uh, other statistics like modularity, which is a nice one, lets you group things together. So yeah, I just want you to go for all the slides. Um, I also have some more examples with more data. So these are CSV files where the edges are in a different file than the connections. So that shows you how to uh, deal with that. And then Web of Science. So this is a more involved exercise. Uh, you go to uh, the Web of Science websites, uh, which is one of those um, portals, it's like a Google Scholar. So you can search for paper titles and it will show you all the papers. And this exercise will let you create a network uh, based on people that often work together. So you'll get like the research groups and other research groups that they uh, collaborate with and who they collaborate with. So you can build like uh, these networks and uh, it's kind of neat. <laughs> and then there's also an exercise for your own data. So if you have something that you want to try out yourself, uh, you can try loading that in Gephi. And if that uh, doesn't work, uh, we can discuss it in the next session. <laughs> but for now, that's all I want to share. Uh, let's get the video back on. So are there any questions about um, like Gephi or things that I went to through too fast that you would like to be repeated. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. It seems like you were troubleshooting so well that nobody has questions. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a file extension I should have thought of that. It happens in Windows and Mac. <laughs> Wonderful. I, I think our plan is to get the recording up online so that mm -hmm. in addition to having slides, you'll have a link to the video. So I'll be sure to tweet that out as soon as it's ready. If you're following um, DH underscore U Ottawa on Twitter, uh, I'll make sure that it's out. And I guess we could also send out an email um, to yep. everyone who's registered. Yeah, no, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll, like, uh, there were a few people that uh, thought these were two different sessions because of the way I put it on Eventbrite, which yeah. was kind of silly for me, but okay. <laughs> we, we learned a uh, lot about Eventbrite. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> uh, but for those people, they can watch the recording and they can join us for the, uh, the second session. So yeah, I'll make sure the recording goes out to everybody that's registered, not just uh, anybody that showed up today. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, if we don't have any other questions, we can let everybody out of class early. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And yeah, uh, don't hesitate to contact me if you have any issues with Gaffy that you want to talk about in the meantime. So. <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.